Hello and welcome to She Makes News. It's Friday, March 29. I'm your host, Kimberly Finess, and this is your weekly wrap-up for regional women in Australia. Before we begin, I would like to dedicate this episode to Britt Abraham from Unlax Candles. In fact, I could dedicate the first three episodes to Britt, who each week would comment on our Instagram posts with news and events that made the show. Britt is an incredible loss to every single community she's been a part of. The message behind Unlax Candles is taking care of yourself when navigating the difficult journey we call grief and reminding us that everyone's journey of grief may look different, but we are never alone. I think we're all being reminded of that right now. Now for our first story. It's what everyone in the flower industry is talking about after the Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show last week. During the mammoth pack down of the five-day event, Alan Douglas from Botany Florist filmed the waste left over from just one display. That Instagram reel has had almost 53,000 views and sparked a lively discussion around the proper disposal of flowers and sundries. What I saw during Bump Out was something that's incredibly common in the industry, nothing new. The use of non-recyclable materials like foam, you know, single-use plastics, and then, yeah, getting confused about what goes in what bin and what the waste streams look like. None of that is a discovery. You know, that's, that's all something that I knew was happening already. And I just thought this is a great opportunity to talk about it in a nice open space in the hopes that, you know, people see it and be like, oh, hang on a sec, I do that. Oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. So that was the point of posting the reel and kind of showing that that is happening and, you know, here's what we can do about it. Alan says there's a lot of confusion around what constitutes as green waste and believes it's an area that her industry desperately needs to improve on. So I guess the confusion comes because you, you're you working with flowers, they do start out natural and biodegradable. And the problem is when they're getting painted, spray painted or dyed, obviously paint is a plastic. And if you're adding that to a biodegradable item, then it turns it into waste. So it's taking something that's natural and should go in the green waste. But once you add paint, it needs to go into landfill. A florist for 14 years, Alan is passionate about making her industry more sustainable. However, she points out that change is slow and challenging when there is a lack of training and support in the industry. It's sort of hard for florists to educate themselves because there's not, we don't have industry get-togethers, you know, we don't kind of have any anywhere where you would find that information unless you were looking for it or unless someone came and told you. So it it is a little bit hard for us to kind of educate ourselves around these things. And that's why I thought there's value in sharing these kinds of things in such an open platform. At the end of the day, you know, social media is the fastest way to reach people these days. So if we put it out on a platform like that, you know, someone can see it and they can be like, oh, right, you know, I didn't know that needed to go into landfill. Now I know. And once you know, you can change your practices. The Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show states on its website that it's making a conscious effort to move towards a more sustainable event. However, hidden under the beauty was excessive waste, including floral foam, which cannot be reused or recovered in the recycling stream. The comments on Alan's video is evidence that florists are keen to improve their practices. When you read the post, it's about the waste of our industry and learning about correct waste streams. Yes, I got the footage at the Melbourne Flower and Garden Show, but it's an example of something that's so commonplace. I'm really proud of people for having a constructive conversation around it. Like a few of the comments are like, oh my God, you know, that's terrible. But the people that actually took the time to sort of write something are like, you know, yes, I struggle with this too. And yeah, you know, we do need to do something about it. Alan says the industry produce a similar pile of floral foam at events and weddings every weekend. She urges consumers to have the conversation with their florist and ask for more sustainable options. You know, if sustainability and reducing waste is something that's important to a couple, then they can ask their florist if they can work with them um, to try and make the wedding kind of as waste-free as possible. Even if you have a florist that does use foam, questions like, well, can you do our wedding without foam? I'm sure any florist would be happy to work with you and do that. Alan teamed up with fellow advocates for locally grown flowers, grown not flown, to create a display in celebration of Victorian grown and seasonal flowers. Their foam-free floral design at the Flower and Garden Show won bronze. 
Alan says the show provides an opportunity for the industry to teach the public about local versus imported flowers, with around 50% of the flowers sold in Australia grown overseas. Yeah, so the Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show, as you say, it's a the biggest show of its kind in Australia. It's the most public-facing event that we have for our industry. So to be able to put locally grown and seasonal flowers on display like that and create a design that taught the public about local versus imported flowers was so important. And it was such a great opportunity to start that conversation about, oh, you know, when I buy flowers, what am I buying? Where do they come from? Is it important to me? you know, what do seasonal flowers look like? I think, yeah, it was a really good opportunity to do that. This week, South Australia announced its winner of the AgriFutures Rural Women's Award. Nikki Atkinson has taken the top honour for promoting the merino wool industry through her sustainable wedding dress and special occasions brand, Horrocksvale Collections. This is just incredible because I've actually seen what it has done to the likes of other rural women and how it's escalated their businesses and their passions. So I'm really excited to be able to elevate my brand and my two passions and also bring um, awareness to the brand. So I think this is absolutely priceless. I mean, the interviews that I've done so far, people are like, well, wedding dresses, really? Like, yeah. So it's just been really excited. Nikki has won a $15,000 grant from Westpac, which she will use to see more couples say yes to a wool dress, both here in Australia and in the UK. I am employing a PR company and I want them to put me in front of the right audiences and also in, in the right platforms because we're talking weddings. So it's lovely that I get followers and people that want to follow my journey, but I'm selling wedding dresses, so I need to be in front of the right audience. And I think that is really hard and because it's such a niche. Um, and I'm hoping that they can also introduce me to influencers um, because influence is a massive thing in fashion now. So, um, and to be the right influencers so that I can create and grow this brand. That's what I want to do with part of it. And then the other part, this is really taking me out of my comfort zone, but I am actually going off to Harrogate in England and flying the woolly flag uh, for Horrocksville Collections in Australian Merino Wool at a expo in August, early August, um, and hoping to get wholesale clients internationally um, so that you can see Horrocksville Collections in the bright lights of New York City and Paris and Dubai and, yeah, just in that different space. Nikki sold her bridal boutique in Adelaide to marry her wool grazier husband and moved to the family property in the Flinders Ranges. She is on a mission to champion fine merino wool as an innovative and sustainable alternative. I've always known that wool is an amazing fibre and I've always known that in a wedding dress it would be perfect and in fact when people see my dresses they have no idea they're wool because they just look like any other dress but wool is only 1.3% of the textile industry which is just ridiculous Um, so I want to increase this market space um, and I'm doing it in an innovative and sustainable way so in a space that's never been done before and I do want brides to consider merino wool because it's a sustainable fibre so for example one polyester wedding dress is the same amount of emissions of what two people create in one year and that's shocking but it's fossil fuels so Um, If I can increase the awareness of Australian merino wool, this fabulous fibre, and I'm getting other designers to use it and it's seen everywhere, then I'm doing my job. Nikki will now go on to represent South Australia at the awards gala dinner and national announcement in Canberra later this year, where the national winner will be awarded an additional $20,000 from Westpac and the national runner-up an additional $15,000. Now let's dig into some headlines with award-winning app Grown Not Flown. It's like a farmer's market in your pocket. Regenerative Psychology, based in Holbrook, New South Wales, has a new psychologist on board. The business offers a comprehensive range of services, including an employee assistance program, preventative wellness coaching, an engaging online wellness program, along with training solutions and executive coaching. Farm Life Fitness are hiring qualified fitness instructors that can teach live at 6am and or possibly a PM class, Australian Western Standard Time. 
Farm Life Fitness provides education, community building, one-on-one coaching and online fitness programs available live and on demand. The community membership is tailor-made by and for women immersed in the Australian farming lifestyle. Podcast host Sky Manson is hosting a workshop that helps bring to life the story behind your brand through newsletters and clever content creation. This immersive half-day event will be held on May 17 at the Collective Grenfell, which is an absolutely incredible co-working and event space in rural New South Wales. Australian author and voice of the Outback, Fleur MacDonald, is launching a new book, Shockwaves. The suspense novel will be available on April 3. Fleur has sold over 850,000 copies of her books, and when she's not writing, she is loving the rural lifestyle on more than 4,000 hectares in Western Australia. Mandy Walker has been named the winner of the 2024 Western Australian AgriFutures Rural Women's Award. Mandy, who co-owns Walker's Diesel Services, has developed a game-changing business model for other wheat belt engineering enterprises. And still with the Rural Women's Award, New South Wales ACT have announced their finalists being Rebecca Keeley, Ray Kanopik and Ruby Reithmuller. And finally, Handmade Canberra is on April 6 and 7. You will find a lot of rural and regional businesses making the trek to the capital of Australia. Entry into the market is free, so if you're in the area, drop in, meet the makers, hear their stories, and definitely take something home that is authentically Australian-made. That's your weekly wrap-up for Regional Women. You'll find links in our show notes for anything that has been mentioned. The show will now be on a break over the school holidays because, well, four kids. <laughs> if you'd like to hear your news, share it with us on Instagram at SheMakesNews or via email SheMakesNews at gmail.com. Now, go and share this with a friend or give us a five-star rating, whatever it takes to share our news even further with regional and rural Australia.